What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and on today we're looking into Hoka's biggest hype show I would say ever. And if nothing else, I'm absolutely loving this, this parrotfish colorway. Do you see the Hoka logo glimmering in the light? I love it. Today we're talking about Hoka's Cielo X1. Before we get started, I do just want to go over some disclosures. Hoka was good enough to send me this pair of the Cielo X1 for the purpose of review. However, they have told me what to say, they don't have any editorial privileges, and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. With that said, the Hoka Cielo X1 will cost you $275. Okay, before we get into all the specs and the stats and how the shoe feels on the run, I want to just state the obvious and say that the Cielo X1 is a premium race day shoe. In fact, I would say this is an enormous step forward for Hoka. Now, I should point out that last year, I would say the Hoka Rocket X2 was probably one of my favorite shoes. I just love how the Rocket X2 fit my foot, how it felt on the run, and everything that I liked about the Rocket X2 is exaggerated in the Cielo X1. Let me put this away. And what I mean by that is the Hoka Cielo X1 is faster, it feels faster, it feels more aggressive, and it's friendlier. And when I say friendlier, I mean it's easier to put on. When I was putting on the Rocket X2, it kind of felt like I had to wrestle my foot in, and that's normally the way with super shoes, but I did find that the Cielo X1 was just a little easier to put on. And I'll explain why in just a second. Let's get going with a few of those specs. Now in the men's version of the Cielo X1 we have 39 millimeters in the heel, 32 in the forefoot for a 7 millimeter drop. In the women's version we have 37 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot also for a 7 millimeter drop. Now Hoka claims that in a US men's size 10 the Cielo X1 would tip the scale at 9.3 ounces or 264 grams and in a women's size 8 it would tip the scale at 7.4 ounces or 210 grams. However in my size a US men's size 13 the Cielo X1 tips the scale at 11.5 ounces or 320 26 grams. So before we go any further, I just want to say what every reviewer is going to be saying. I can't just brush this weight under the rug. When we compare the Cielo X1 to its cohorts, to other racing shoes, to other super shoes, the Cielo X1 comes in a little heavier. Now as far as other super shoes that I currently have in my rotation, the next heaviest super shoe is the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, and that tips the scale at 276 ounces, which is 50 grams less than the Cielo X1. From there, I have the On Cloud Boom Echo 3 at 267 grams, the Saucony Indoor an Elite at 250 grams and the Nike Vaporfly 3 at 235 grams. So yes, the Nike Vaporfly 3 does weigh 90 grams less than the Cielo X1, but weight isn't everything and I want you to finish watching this video because this shoe does a lot of things right and it does overcome its weight discrepancy, at least in my opinion. So let's get started at the top and work our way down. Now Hoka is using an engineered knit upper and we can see this knit upper around the heel collar. It is very thin and then right on the inside of this heel collar we have two bolsters and those two bolsters don't meet in the back. So we've got two grippy bolsters just kind of grabbing the back of your heel and then the heel counter is extremely rigid. You know how a lot of super shoes they kind of do away with the heel counter and they feel very loose on your heel. Not so with a Cielo X1. This has a solid heel counter and I had absolutely no heel slip. This is partially what I mean when I say that it's a very friendly super shoe. When your foot goes in you are really feeling locked in and ready to go. Now usually I am not a fan of knit uppers but I realize that when I say I'm not a fan of knit uppers it's when we're talking about daily trainers and the knit upper is like as thick as a woolly jumper. That isn't the case with the Cielo X1. This is a very, very light knit upper. And it's super breathable. Even running in the heat here in Florida, I didn't experience any issues with my feet overheating. In fact, I can actually look through it and I can see inside the shoe. It's very difficult for you to see that on camera, but the upper is that light and breathable. As far as overlays go, there really are many. Hoka has used different weave patterns in order to give the upper a little structure. Obviously, we have the branding right here. We have an underlay coming around the toe box and then just some reinforcement along the eyelet chain. The tongue is very thin. Again, it's a knit tongue. Super breathable. We have laser cut holes all the way through it and the tongue is fully gusseted. There is no lace loop and we do have a big tongue pull right here on the front. Something I did find a bit funny was when I put these shoes on for the first time and that is this knit tongue is very stretchy. So when my foot got seated and I was trying to pull this tongue up, it almost seemed like the tongue was a little long and I could pull it up quite a long way. Of course, I put that down to this just being a new shoe and not having put it on my foot before because I didn't experience anything negative from the tongue when I was out on the run and on my subsequent runs when I tied the shoe and pulled the tongue up it wasn't really noticeable but I just want to make note of it in case you guys get a pair you put it on and you pull it up and you think that tongue is a bit overwhelming it's really not bad at all. Being gusseted on both sides there's no tongue slip I didn't have any lace bite but speaking of lace bite let's just talk about these laces. Now I really wasn't sure what to make of these laces now they're kind of like an H shape so the outside of the laces are slightly thicker than the interior and the interior part of this flat lace is almost translucent I can see my finger through it when 
I'm running my finger along. Before I tied these shoes on, it felt like, are these laces actually gonna give me a good lockdown? Are they gonna come untied? And the answer is categorically no. When I tied these laces, they never came untied once. And I can say that I didn't have any issues when it came to tying the shoes on, the lockdown that they gave. And I'd say that probably has something to do with the shape of the laces. They do tend to bind together and hold on to each other very well, which is nice in a race day scenario. You don't wanna be stopping and tying your laces. Now let's come down to the midsole. Now this midsole is fantastic. Hoka has clearly put a lot of R&D into this. And what we've got is a full Piba midsole, but we've got a dual density midsole. So we've got different densities of Piba foam. Now sandwiched in between these two layers of Piba foam is a dynamic winged carbon fiber plate. And that plate runs heel to toe. And if I hold it up for you guys to look at right here, you can see the line where these two foams meet. And you can see how aggressive this toe spring is in the front. But just coming back to the midsole for a second, this top portion is just slightly softer than the bottom version. Now when I take out my durometer and put it on the top portion, I am getting a reading of 21 and on the bottom, Piba foam, 32. So yeah, the top is just slightly softer than the bottom. And that's gonna to contribute to a nice soft stepping feel. And it's gonna to contribute to that soft and bouncy feeling, but maintaining that high energy return. Speaking of energy return, the Hoka Cielo X1 has the highest energy return of any Hoka shoe yet. So up until now, if you have run in the Rocket X2, you are really going to be pleasantly surprised with the Cielo X1. In fact, in my opinion, I would say that this shoe compares with any of the other super shoes that I run in when it comes to ride quality when it comes to responsiveness. The Cielo X1 is right up there with the top contenders. Hoka has also incorporated an exaggerated rocker profile and this rocker profile becomes really noticeable when you start picking up the pace. It makes transitions smooth, it makes transitions easy and it really provides that feeling of forward propulsion that we're looking for when we buy a carbon plated super shoe. And those are actually the main reasons why I want you to put weight aside if you are considering buying a pair of the Cielo X1 because that additional weight wasn't noticeable in my workouts. No, I did intervals, I did tempo runs. I even took the Cielo X1 out for some easy miles just to see how it performed. And I've got to say, again, for the friendly shoe, I would say that the Cielo X1 is good for pretty much any runner. So if you think you have to be a sub three marathoner in order to get the most out of the Cielo X1, I gotta tell you, that's not the case. This shoe is going to work well for a lot of people, a wide range of runners. Okay, let's just come down to the outsole and you can see immediately when I turn it over that there is a lot of rubber coverage here on the bottom. And that's a good thing for us, right? This very generous amount of outsole rubber is going to make sure these shoes last longer than your average super shoe. I'm also loving these cutouts. Now this cutout exits on the lateral side and we've got another cutout here on the toe, one on the heel with that gorgeous exposed carbon fiber plate. And then I just want to talk about wear for just a second. Now I've been making this video, I've run about 50 kilometers in this shoe and I am getting a little bit of wear on the midsole foam right here, which is actually somewhat towards the midfoot. And I'm pleasantly surprised because usually I get wear right here on this back lateral edge and I'm really not seeing it on the Cielo X1. My main amount of wear is right here on this rubber, moving slightly into the exposed midsole right here. And that has to be a product of the rocker profile and where I'm landing on this shoe, as opposed to other shoes where I tend to hit more on the back. Of course, on other shoes, when I'm running a lot slower, I tend to heel strike a little more. And I have been running a lot of faster miles in the Cielo X1. And when I run faster, I tend to hit more midfoot. So that's not entirely surprising. Anyway, I'm super pleased with the amount of wear I can see on the bottom. So I've already said I took this shoe out for intervals, a couple of tempo runs, and a couple of easy runs. And I just want to describe the feeling of putting your foot into this shoe because when you put your foot in, we do have a lot of midsole foam here in the middle and you're kind of going to get a funny feeling because your weight's right in the middle of the foot when you're standing still. And basically that is your foot experiencing the rocker profile when you first put your foot in because it is very easy to rock back and forth in the Cielo X1. Now, the second you get running, and I'm talking about running at any speed, that feeling of having that foam in your midfoot goes away. And I found that when I pick up the pace and I start running at a sustained sustainable pace, so we're talking tempo paces. The Cielo X1 makes it more effortless. In fact, when I was running in it and I'm actively thinking about how to describe this shoe, it occurred to me that this is exactly what people are looking for when they spend the money on a super shoe. It makes running at a fast pace easier. In fact, my very first run in the Cielo X1, I went out and I did mile repeats. And during those mile repeats, of course, I'm looking at my watch, I'm looking at my heart rate, I'm looking at my pace, and I was very pleased to see that my heart rate was a little lower and my pace was a little faster. Now, now, look, I know what you're going to say. There's a lot of other variables that go into that. Maybe I got a really good night's sleep. Maybe I had a couple of days off before or I was somehow other better recovered than I usually am. But the point is, is that this was a normal run and I went out in a brand new pair of shoes and ran a similar workout that I usually do at least once a week. And the results for me were better. Now, of course, individual results are going to vary. And I got to say that the week after that workout, when I went out and did a tempo run, my heart rate was right where it always is. But I guess what I'm trying to get across is, is that the carbon fiber plate, the geometry are what make 
make this shoe fast. And they worked very well for me. And I can say that this is a shoe that will see race day for me, probably sooner rather than later. All right, guys, your turn. I want to know, are you looking to pick up a pair of the Hoka Cielo X1? If you're not planning on immediately picking up a pair, let me know what your super shoe of choice is and what you like about it. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Hoka Cielo X1. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.